you guys, there's just so many things going on. I mean, it's too late to do anything about the nuclear power, which I was fighting against in the 70s. It's too late to do a lot of stuff, but it, it's not too late to do something about smart meters. Smart meters, uh, I, I, there are people, I'm not going to go through all of the problems. We know the problems, health. I'm a person who had one foot of flame coming through the wall of my house from an outlet after the smart meter was uh, put in. The smart meter was replaced. It was a phony uh, smart meter. It was actually another smart meter, and I was sort of deceived. I'm, in general, I'm just really, really sick of the deception everywhere. I mean, it's part of our culture, and you're part of our culture. You're probably no worse than something than the, the general culture, but it's time for people to get honest. And that's what I think, uh, that's what basically what I have to say. Thank you. Over four and a half years ago, in this room, a concerned public warned against smart meters, smart meter rollout. What was once thought of as a small opposition in California has grown in number across the nation and abroad. 29 world scientists and doctors, authors of the Bioinitiative Report, stated in the report, bioeffects can alter, occur from just minutes of exposure to cell towers, Wi-Fi, and utility smart meters that reduce whole body exposure. Many of these bioeffects can reasonably presumed uh, to result in adverse health effects if the exposures are prolonged or chronic because they disrupt homeostasis prevent the body from healing, damage DNA, produce immune system imbalances, metabolic disruption, and lower resilience to disease. We know that children, adolescents, and seniors are more vulnerable to biological harm from utility smart meters, which is the reason why I have pleaded with you numerous times to give the option of opt-out to French American International School at 150 Oak Street. And as yet, you have not chosen not to? Why has this been ignored? Could PG&E executive and shareholder profits be more important to you than the health and welfare of our children? I'm asking that phase IHS be allowed to opt out and for the removal of the opt out fees. And I'd like to submit to President PB Commission a smart meter wireless radiation comparison. It goes from cell tower um, to Wi-Fi exposure, laptop, cordless phone, and then we have a smart meter, which is the um, highest exposure of radio frequency radiation. Show it to everyone, Leslie. This and each one copy. Thank you. Mr. PV, you have created much misery. There's now EMF refugees wandering for a safe place to live, abandoning their homes that they created. I want my extortion fee back, and I want the monies that I have been paying at the rate of $10 a month for many months, and I want everybody else to receive their money back. You have not fulfilled your assignment to protect the people from greedy, covert, lying utility companies. The scientific data that's about smart meters that have been presented by scientists all over the world is staggering. And you, Mr. Peavy, look stupider with each passing minute. You are thoroughly incapable of handling, regulating anything. of information about the harm the RF exposure from these meters can cause 
I think there are good people here at the CPUC, and under, but under your leadership, they can't do their job. You're not serving the public, and I ask you, please resign. Basically, you have a criminal enterprise here running this Public Utilities Commission. Uh, uh, PV here was a former executive of uh, Southern California Edison, and now he's chair. He's supposed to do oversight on the utilities. What kind of conflict of interest is that? It's a big one. Uh, the California working people and the public are not being served by a corrupt commission which is doing damage control for PG&E in Southern California Edison and lying to the people of California. They want the ratepayers to pay for these nuclear plants, San Onofre and Diablo Canyon, where the utilities have lied and should be prosecuted, the executives and the company managers have put in prison for lying to the people of California. They're putting them, their health and safety in danger. You are doing damage control, and Jerry Brown, who's running for governor, has to be put on the spot. Why is he keeping these corrupt officials in charge of the Public Utility Commission? Yeah. That's, that's the question you have to ask. Jerry Brown, Jerry Brown is responsible. Now, what we're saying is even whistleblowers at the nuclear plants who've complained about health and safety have been retaliated and fired and blackballed. What has this commission done? The Public Utility Commission. They covered up for pg and &E in Southern California Edison at Diablo Canyon with the meters. We're saying that this has to be clean house. Kamala Harris should prosecute, investigate and prosecute the reading of judges and the corruption of this commission. You people belong in jail. We need an elected commission from the people of California that's not controlled by the utilities. We need public power in California so that people can have an efficient energy industry instead of an industry that's run for the profit of these corporate executives. That's what we need for the people of California and the workers of California who die because of the criminal activity of these utility corporations, which you people cover for. The judge fiction itself, the judge fixing, is a criminal act, yet there's no prosecution. Kamala Harris is missing in action. Where are our officials who have that availability? You should be out and you should be fired and you should be put in prison, PV. Nice. I hope you found meaningful the copy of the film, Take Back Your Power, that you received um, several months ago before your arrival, Commissioner Picker. Uh, today, I've brought you each a new gift, a copy of Dr. Martin Lank's Overpowered. Uh, you should find it helpful in your role, your appointed role for the protection of Californians. Overpowered uh, is about what science tells us about the dangers of <clears throat> Wi-Fi age devices. Dr. Plank is a biophysicist and researcher from Columbia University. Uh, he sounded the alarm. He calls himself an unlikely activist um, because he's <clears throat> so concerned with sounding the alarm about the dangers of all Wi-Fi devices. Yes, smart meters are implicated, pages 44 and 45, as significant sources of radiation. Significant sources of radiation, quote, unquote. An authoritative cover comment says, Dr. Blank does a superb job of explaining the biological effects of all things wireless on cell physiology and how to protect ourselves and, most importantly, our children. Sections demonstrate the dark side of technology, an inconvenient truth we must consider. This is an inconvenient truth that we've asked you to address for four years now. And that inconvenient truth must be addressed with the removal of smart meters or in the interim, short of that, a no-fee opt-out. A no-fee opt-out is the only opt-out that represents a real choice. Thank you. Okay. This commission has proven it is not a watchdog for the public, but a lapdog for corporate CEOs. PG&E has a long history of injuring workers, the public, and the environment, including lost plutonium, toxic waste dumping, diverting maintenance funds into profits, and on and on and on. People have been dying because of this. Now the smart meter fiasco. And you keep letting them get away with it. Eliminating, uh, everyone paid for their utility to acquire smart meters. And now we're being charged again for getting back analog meters and meter readers we've also already paid for years ago. Eliminating meter readers endangers our neighborhoods because they know how to recognize early warning signs of gas leaks 
like the one in San Bruno. Smart meters cause house fires, injuries, and toxic evictions. Charging people to protect themselves from harm is a protection racket. Smart meters aggravate existing medical conditions, and it's a violation of the ADA to charge people with disabilities extra for essential services. The meters also mine personal data without permission, which are acts of illegal search and seizure. It's illegal to charge a fee to protect one's constitutional rights. Do your job and serve the public. Return all analog meters free and on demand. Refund all opt-out extortion fees that have already been paid. Pay reparations to all who have been injured, displaced, or otherwise harmed by these meters. And revoke PG&E's corporate charter. Seize its infrastructure and turn it over to the public. If you do not do right by the people, then this commission must be disbanded. You. Step down. Having just returned from the New York climate convergence, I'm freshly aware that at this crucial time, when we have just a few decades to avert the worst of the catastrophic, catastrophic effects of climate change, how the CPUC regulates monopoly utilities is increasingly critical. That's why the pattern of corruption we've witnessed is even more disastrous. From collusion with PG&E regarding the horrendous disaster uh, with, at San Bruno, to colluding with PG&E regarding spying on the ratepayers, objecting to forced installation of harmful smart meters, to colluding with Southern California Edison over who pays for their terrible management of San Onofre, the pattern of corruption is clear. But I was still shocked to find out that um, from a reliable uh, source, a former CPUC commission president, that as my dear friend and colleague, Barbara George, was dying, her compensation was deliberately withheld, though people at the commission knew she needed the money for her cancer treatment. After friends and um, lawmakers intervened, the check was finally released, but Barbara had already died. Today I stand with both the dismayed public and your CPUC staffers who are calling for a commission that they can be proud to work for. Corruption and climate crisis, aging nuclear reactors, hazardous wireless meters, and natural gas lines don't mix. Good morning, uh, commissioners. Um, I'm a, a senior, and um, I opted out, but I'm paying the fees, um, which I would like to have back. Um, all my neighbors in my block, and probably all around my neighborhood, most of them have smart meters. So if I take a walk, if I go out in the garden uh, to work, and meters are near me, I, I'm exposed to these meters. Um, if, if there was a ability, if the fees were um, removed, then some of my neighbors might be able to afford to, to opt out, might be more interested in it. Um, there's an issue of uh, allowing businesses to opt out, and I think this is very important. Many of the businesses are health care providers, and uh, I myself go to alternative treatments for a variety of things. I'm a former cancer patient. And um, I do acupuncture, chiropractic, other alternative treatments. And if I spend time in an office lying there relaxed and getting treatment, and then I'm being exposed to the meters, which is, has been described, or damage our DNAs. So um, there's other businesses too, like libraries and community centers, where people go and do qigong and all kinds of things to feel better. So there should be an, um, uh, this, this opt out in businesses is very important. Also, there's the issue of apartment buildings. Um, people that live apartment buildings where there are banks of meters, um, if people could afford to opt out, then maybe more would, and people wouldn't be exposed. And um, the, the issue of community areas being able to opt out, where people can live in a protected area. So we need you, as a California Public Utility Commission, to take leadership. You've heard us come here for 
quite a few years, and people have given you information, given you books, given you DVDs, and um, so we're here again, and we want this uh, to be, make some progress. I think I speak to the audience because I've never seen the CPC pay attention yet. What I saw after Josh spoke was that the commissioners before us actually focused on the fact that people were at the podium. It takes a public struggle to wake people up. Thanks for that, Josh. As Ralph Nader says, the only safe utility is a public utility with public oversight and scrutiny. We need a public agency to protect us, stopping and preventing st toxic wireless radiation, toxic nuclear radiation, ga gas pipelines that have not been properly maintained, and private corporations allowed to run amok. We need a governor in California to actually do his job and oversee the CPUC. The CPUC, under current undersight, is a money and power pipeline to the rich and does not serve or protect those they are supposed to protect. California is for sale. It's water, infrastructure, fuel, fracking, and public-private partnership. It's a fire sale with fireworks being provided by its exploding smart meters and gas pipelines. Hi, my name is Mike Pell. Uh, Mr. Peavy, I have an email from Carol Brown. Uh, are you aware of that email? Wait, I'm not. Go ahead. The email says, hello, Mr. Now, President Peavy has been informed by Executive Director Clannon that you and Mr. Clannon are working, communicating now on your issues and President Peavy is confident that this is the best avenue for you to pursue at this time. Executive Director Clannon will keep President Peavy and the rest of the commissioners up to date on your issues and any progress made. Thank you, Carol Brown. I'd asked Mr. Clannon to investigate whether or not ATT lied in a formal complaint to conceal problems in its infrastructure. Eight months later, I called Mr. P. Clannon almost every day for eight months. He finally said to me, I think I need you to hear me when I say there's no authority for me or any other individuals here to make a determination on whether somebody lied or didn't or whether that number was yours or not. The commission makes that determination through its formal process and you went through the formal process. Now who am I supposed to go to if the commission can't make a determination of whether or not a utility lied in a formal complaint? Mr. Peavy, would you please? Give this to Mr. TV so we can look at it. Give it to Mr. Klein. <laughs> I'm asking if you were aware of the email where Carol Brown asked me to work with Paul Klein. Were you aware of that email? Just finish your, your presentation. That's the whole thing. Were you aware of that email or was this another sweet note like she sent to the city of, to the PG&E to deal with San Bruno and she said, send them a sweet note saying the issue is moved, blah, 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 and then wait for them to throw a fit. It appears that Carol Brown sent me that email to waste my time. Thank you. Love you. I've been involved notoriously in some public power struggles since I published a book called Wounds and Sonnet and a chapter called Public Power and so forth. Now, uh, there's a document that's produced by the commission. It's called General Order 77M. It was a redacted, non-redacted version. So it listed that in that in that version, it listed the names of everyone. At, for example, at PG&E, about 2,200 people had made seventy thousand dollars or more. And then in 2004, it was changed to uh, everyone that made between 125,000. And two hundred forty-nine thousand dollars, nine hundred nine nine hundred ninety-nine dollars, and they only had, to, and so a lot of people were off the list. The second thing that was interesting about it, it was a totally uh, they, they created redacted and unredacted. The redacted, the unredacted version could be viewed only by people who work for the commission or who are part of the commission family, as they put it. Uh, but the redacted version is incomprehensible. So they list, you know, four or five hundred people, and it lists their titles without the names. It lists their salaries, and so you say director, director of what? So you have no idea who's showing up when we have these hearings at the local agency formation commission, Yolo County, Sacramento County, at the 
be nice if someone, I'll write someone an email about this, and maybe someone could just change it back to what it was uh, before 2003. And uh, also, just one more comment, President, uh, uh, President Peavy, uh, that was changed under your watch, I think, in two, probably 2004, I'm guessing. Just, just as, as an agitator and propagandist, I like getting correct information. Thank you. Great. The Supreme Court held that the American people are in fact sovereign and not the states or the government. The court went on to define that local, state, and federal law enforcement officers were committing unlawful actions against the sovereign people by the enforcement of the laws and are personally liable for their actions. That was from Supreme Court case Bond versus United States, 529 U.S. 334, 2000. He further states, the state and federal government is a corporation, and therefore the Congress, state legislatures, city councils, municipalities, and all state and federal courts are corporate entities posing as constitutional branches of government. Corporations are privately owned businesses, meaning that the corporate United States belongs to one or more private individuals, which is always governed by a board of directors. The corporate United States is a privately owned group of European royal and elite individuals tied to the Federal Reserve System, and the letters of corporation are recorded in the Vatican. Okay, well, thank you very much. So, go to The Great American Adventure, or go to StopTheCrime.net. It's on the site there, and you can download the whole thing for free. Thank you. Okay, and Deborah Tavares. <coughs> and then uh, Katie Hickles. Thank you, Deborah Tavares with StopTheCrime.net. I think it's really important now to, of course, um, recognize that this is a Delphi meeting. Uh, this is a corporate meeting style that was presented long ago in the 60s by the Rand Corporation. This is a Delphi meeting. The illusion of public comment is strictly an illusion. It's a requirement under the corporate charter. Why is it an illusion of public comment? Because they do not serve you. They are posing as servants. It's pretty clear they do not. I wanted to go over many things, but now because of the illusion of co public comment, I have maybe one minute left. Uh, this is a uh, redundant uh, deployment of smart meters on all of us. Make no mistake about it. First of all, PG&E is controlled and owned by Rothschild, Inc. You can type in PG&E and Rothschild, Inc. and you will find that that is a notorious, villainous banking family out of Europe. Uh, Rothschild also goes by the name of Viola, V-E-O-L-I-A. Most important, we are being fleeced as American people, and in the process, we're being genocided through programs that they absolutely know are causing harm and injury. So all of the purported illnesses are in fact a fact. That's part of the program. The climate action plans have been approved more or less across the United States in every single city. PG&E and the CPUC, the CPUC is incorporated, they do not work for you. Most important to understand, and they don't, they've proven that. More importantly, the smart readers are being rolled out in a second wave of deception via the climate action plans that are based on a false science of global warming. These are policies that are riding on the back of anatomy of a con job. The book you must read, Anatomy of a Con Job, on StopTheCrime.net, but you're going to get your smart meters. You are absolutely going to get them in every city. The CPUC knows this. This is why they're dragging their feet. This is why you are getting no action, because they're coming in the back door. Smart meters are required along with RFID chipped um, appliances, and this is part of Thank you very much. a planned program. Thank you very much. Okay, Katie, Nikos. Good morning. Thank you for holding co public comments. Good morning to each of you, the commissioners. This is a very difficult hearing. I know most of you are going through this hearing like this. But 
I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I'm going to say, do you know, Chairman Peabody, I think you're doing a hell of a job. How can any of the commissioners have any integrity when your client QC is so powerful and, and wealthy? Even if you were to step down, somebody else would be stepping into your shoes and doing exactly the same thing because there's so much pressure. There's so much money. We have, are living in such a disparity times. PGD is so powerful, so wealthy. Okay? I'm sorry about that. How toxic are the smart meters? I brought this up at an earlier meeting earlier this year. Each smart meter is is giving off as much as 190,000 pulses during a 24 hour. It's 24 by seven, it's nonstop. Uh, then also you've got, it's radiating as much radiation as a cell phone base station. So what's the big deal? Well, you know, tobacco smoking, cancer didn't show up for 10, 20, 30 years. It's gonna be the same thing, it's much, much worse. Do you know that already in, in small children, children food allergies have tripled? Uh, in just 11 years, 1997 to 2008, and there were only 50,000 cell towers in, uh, in 1997. Now there's over 500,000 and growing. So 50,000 to 500,000 uh, food allergies have tripled in children. Autism rates have gone up. One in 2000 in the uh, 1970s. Now it's one in 50. Okay. And you've also got uh, the secondhand radiation. Okay. The smoke. If I was to, to go up to each one of you and be blowing smoke into your face 24 by 7, I mean, you'd, you'd, you'd call the police on me or something and throw me in jail, right? But it's the same thing with electronic, except it's just invisible. And that's really, really bad. So we've got cancer, we've got secondhand radiation. It's, the, the future is really, really bleak. Please pull out these smart meters, okay? Please. Good morning. According to the Lawrence Laboratory, Americans streamed 3.2 billions of video in 2011. This consumed enough energy to power 175,000 U.S. households for one year. 1.3 billion kilograms of CO2 were emitted into the air. This, in combination with mindless cell phone use, is the overlooked heart of climate change. The CPUC's recent criminal actions reflect an intoxicated disregard for the law and the people you are mandated to protect. You have treated the public with an attitude of contempt and dehumanization. Commissioner Picker, especially who I can't even see over there. With all the consistent stories of hardship that six smart meter refugees have shared over the last five years, I haven't seen much compassion towards our suffering. The endangered species, the yellow-legged frog, gets more government protection than the endangered Homo sapiens. To quote Einstein, I think technology has moved beyond our humanity. The Machiavellian ideology, the end justifies the means, is a sure signpost that a government's moral compass is broken. According to the principle of love taught by all spiritual leaders, including the Dalai Lama, no one, no one should be purposely subjected to pain or suffering. Large-scale collateral damage cannot be the justification for the smart meter, the proposed preposterous solution in the holy war against climate change. President Peavy, there is an increasing movement for you to resign. I do not happen to be in that camp. I believe you will ultimately do the right thing. But you do need to redeem yourself. As it stands now, you don't have the moral authority to make decisions for the people of California. Today's smart meter is a Frankenstein version of Emil's AMR meter that inspired you in 1993. Additionally, since then, independent health studies and the increasing epidemic of cancer and EMF sensitivity show the hazards of microwave radiation. Remove all smart meters now. In the interim, let the public decide for themselves. Redraft your proposed decision. Declare a no-fee opt-out. Thank you. Okay. We suspected, and now everyone knows, that behind our backs you collude with those who harm and cheat us. You commissioners know the smart meter program increases energy use, is not cost effective, is technically deficient, contravenes constitutionally protected rights to privacy, markets personal data, causes fire, and sickens the public. Think carefully why you have endorsed this idiocy enabled this criminal stupidity because it doesn't
does not speak well either to your cognitive abilities or your moral fiber. Your chairman's bargain with the devil has ruined his reputation. His legacy is San Bruno and corrupting the CPUC. What motivates the rest of you? Are you so flawed, so cowardly, so beholden to Jerry Brown that you have no pride, not one ounce of courage that wills you to do better? <laughs>